Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a Q&A. I asked some questions on Instagram yesterday and I was going to film this yesterday but I just filmed so many videos yesterday that I was a kind of bit all filmed out so I thought I'd give myself a break and film this one today. I was actually just about to start this video and then I've got this morning on in the background but just like no volume and then Alfie came on like as in pointless vlog Alfie and I was like oh so I just started watching that and had a little you know pause in the filming situation. Anyway, I'm now going to answer some of your questions. As I said, I asked on Instagram. I always ask on Instagram. I'm not going to be able to answer all of the questions, but I will answer a good handful. My Q&As are normally quite hefty videos. The first question is, do you ever regret staying behind a year at uni and starting another course? Love you. Love you too. Um, no. Well, to start with, I did. Like, when I started in September on business management, I was so, like oh my god, what have I done? Because I was really, everybody else was applying for placements, all of my friends on my old course, and Bradley and everybody was applying for placements, and I just felt like I was still behind. I was back in first year, I wasn't applying for placements, and I was just doing the whole thing over again. I just felt like I was doing the whole thing over again, and it did make me feel upset, but like now I've got on with the course, and even once I got in the course the first couple of months, I just realised how much more I enjoyed it than I did last year, and so kind of the regret kind of went, if you know what I mean. At the end of the day, I didn't know what was going to happen, I didn't know I wasn't going to like fashion buying and merchandising, so it can't really be a regret, because I'm really happy that I'm now doing something that I love and I really enjoy everything I'm doing. I've got really good grades this year and I'm just really happy with like the place that I'm at with university right now and I wouldn't be in that place if I would have carried on with the course last year. My next question is what is your favourite drugstore foundation which lasts all day? It's the one I've got on right now and I did the video on it on Monday so if you haven't seen that video go and watch it. It was a drugstore haul and first impressions face video um, but it's the L'Oreal Infallible Mattifying Foundation. It literally just lasts all day. I love it so much. I had it in my haul because like I brought a new shade of it which is what I've got on right now because all the other shades that I've got, I've got two other shades and none of them match me um, so I went and bought the new one and it just lasts all day. I absolutely love it. The next question is, did you enjoy driving when you first passed? If not, how did you gain so much confidence to drive to and from Manchester? I loved driving as soon as I passed, if I'm honest. I hated driving lessons. Like, I didn't I didn't like driving lessons. I didn't like being told what to do, especially once I'd, like, knew how to drive and I was just kind of getting to the point of passing my test. I didn't like it. I really liked my instructor, he was really nice, um, but I don't know, just the lessons, I just didn't like, I didn't want to go on them. Um, and I did go through stages when I was learning, being like, oh my god, I'm so fed up of doing this. But I passed my, I passed driving test second time, which somebody else asked that question, so I thought I'd answer it now. Yeah, I passed my driving test the second time, um, and yeah, I, I did kind of, once I passed, I did have confidence, and I was the first person out of all of my friends to start driving, so I just took people to places, like, not like lifts and stuff, but we used to go to the cinema and blah blah blah, so it was almost like expected, it was just like, yeah, let's go, like, it wasn't like oh, let me just drive there first by myself, like, it was just, yeah, let's go, like, I don't know, it just kind of happened, um, I am a confident driver, um, and I don't really know where that's come from, my, both my parents are confident drivers, so I don't know whether it's come from that, I think it's just getting that experience of getting, like, you know, your bearings and things like that, if you struggle, or struggle with directions, make sure you get yourself a sat nav and stuff like that, um, I think as well, don't be too scared, like, a lot of people are like, how do you drive in Manchester? Even people that I'm at uni with. And I'm like, it's really not that difficult. And I know everyone's different, but like, it's not that scary. If you know where you're going, you're absolutely fine. Next question is, what's your favourite and least favourite thing about being a YouTuber? My favourite thing is being able to film videos and chat to you guys through a camera. I really like being creative. I really like filming like different shots and stuff like that. Even though I don't do it very often, I do obviously normally just do sit down videos in my room. But I do really enjoy being creative with it. Um, I don't know, I just, I enjoy putting content out there for you guys and I enjoy the interaction between us. Um, I don't know, it's just really nice feeling like I've got like nearly 12,000 friends on the internet. It's just a really nice situation to be in. And that's one of the things that I love. Probably the worst thing is probably the pressure, especially with vlogging. Like, I can understand people that daily vlog that then say, do you know what, I'm stopping daily vlogging because it is difficult. And when I've said, like, you know, I'm really not very well, kind of there won't be a weekly vlog, or like when my grandma passed away and I couldn't weekly vlog, I felt so guilty, even though there was so much stuff going on in my life personally. And even like, 
if people are being nice but they're just saying like when's the vlog coming up like when, when are you were loading it and it's just like you're being nice that you're not being nasty in the slightest but i take it as like oh my god that's more pressure like like i don't know how people do it that have like got millions of subscribers and vlog like main channel videos i don't really feel the pressure of at all really whereas vlogging i do feel the pressure of quite a lot but i do enjoy vlogging i love vlogging i love putting vlogs out for you guys um so it's not something that i will ever stop anytime soon but i don't know i just i do feel the pressure with it that's probably my main kind of probably the worst thing someone's asked if you travel for the last time where do you choose to go and with whom i would go with bradley 100 percent um, and I don't really know where I would go. I've always said I want to go to New York. I really want to go to America and specifically New York. I'd like to go to New York at Christmas, even though it's supposed to be freezing. But I don't know, I just, I really want to go to New York and I've never been before. I've never been to America and I really, really want to go. Um, kind of, Europe does interest me, like going travelling around Europe. But if I had like the last, the last thing I had to travel, I don't think I'd choose to travel around Europe. I'm not necessarily like a travelling gal, like... I don't know, you won't necessarily see me with my backpack walking around like Thailand for like three months. Um, but I do like seeing countries and going on holidays. I'm more of a holiday person than like a travelling person. Does that make sense? Someone said, I love your positive outlook on life. Thank you. Um, do you have any tips for people who may be struggling, to, uh, struggling with feeling happy? And somebody else has asked a similar question to this as well. My thing is always looking on the bright side of the situation. I think you can learn from a lot of situations and I just think if you let every single little thing in life get you down and get you in a bad mood, you're never going to be happy, like, or not truly happy. And I just think some people moan so much about so many things that don't even matter, like, the tiniest things. And I just think, just let it go. Like, yeah, have a little moan, but then just let it go and have a little laugh about it rather than... I don't know, making out that it's like World War 3, like, I, I don't know, that's my main pet peeve is people that moan about stuff that really does not need moaning about. Um, and I just think that's one of the things for me is that a tip would just be to, rather than moan about things, just try and look at the positives of the situation. And also just try and have a laugh, like smile every day, try and have a laugh, like laugh with your friends or with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your parents or whatever. Just have a laugh and like, I don't know, I think if you're just a bit more light-hearted about life, at the end of the day you don't know when life's going to end and I know that's a bit morbid but you don't like at the end of the day and I just think make the most of what you've got. Like if you sit there and moan every day, all day, you're not making the most of what you've got at all. Somebody said, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, how old would I be in five years? Like nearly, I'll be 25, nearly 26. Well, not nearly 26, my birthday's in October. Like 25 and a half. Um, I will have graduated uni um, and I don't really know where I'll live. Like I'll 100% be living with Bradley, but I don't know exactly where I would live. It will all depend obviously on when I get a job and where exactly that is. I'm starting to think that I want to go into PR and a lot of PR companies are in London. So that would mean that I probably live more further down south, like where I live now, for example, not where I live now, like at home, but it like further south, like here rather than up in Manchester, I don't think that's going to particularly work if I've got a job in London. Um, I did, when I went to uni in Manchester, the whole last year I was like, I want to live here for the rest of my life. I really was so like, Manchester is the best place ever. And I do love it, and I do think it's a fantastic place, but there is other places in the UK, and I really miss my countryside so much, and it sounds so stupid, but like, here at home, I am in a small town and you drive, I'm talking, I could drive 30 seconds that way and I will be in the countryside. There'll be fields and everything. And I miss that so much being in Manchester. The countryside really clears my head and at home, me and Bradley will go for so many walks if we're both home at the same time or like me and mum will or whatever. Even if it's just like, you know, around our estate and then kind of like out into, I don't know, just out into some fields or whatever. I can't do that in Manchester and I, you know, thinking ahead and thinking about having kids, I don't want my kids to not have the countryside upbringing that I had, like, I loved it, like, I've got such strong memories of, like, driving through fields with mum and my brother and looking at all these cows and these sheep and I was talking to mum about it the other day and I was like, I don't want my kids to not have that and 
in five years I don't want kids yet, I don't want kids at 25, but maybe I might be engaged, I don't know, I don't know really, I don't know, I haven't, like, I do think about the future quite a lot, but I've said this before, when I was younger and when I was in sit form, I had everything planned, I knew everything that was going to happen, I was like, yes, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to work for this company, and I'm going to get engaged at this age and whatever, then I went to uni, did the degree that I thought I wanted to do for the entire of my life, and I hated it, and the plan went out the window, <laughs> so... I've kind of got to the point now where I don't plan quite as much and I love thinking about the future but I don't plan it, like, I don't plan it year by year anymore. Someone asked what do you think that's what of your opinions of PLL season 6B. I didn't like the season, I liked it but I didn't think it was like amazing, like in comparison to the whole rest of PLL and the re and like in comparison to season 6A I thought 6B was just not great, I didn't think that there was that much drama, it was too much, I like Gabby, I was watching one of Gabby's videos and she said the same thing, it was too like teenage girl like, I don't know, just drama rather than actual like scary like PLL stuff like do you know what I mean um, but the finale was amazing I was even tempted to do an entire video just sit there and talk about the PLL finale so if any of you would watch that let me know um, but yeah I was very tempted to do one just because I don't know I like chatting about that kind of stuff I love chatting about TV shows um, because I get really into the TV shows that I watch and so I really like talking about them so I did think I might do that so if you guys want to want to see that let me know but if there's only like three of you then I probably won't do it um, but yeah I don't know that's my opinion I really liked the finale but the rest of the season was just a bit meh for me I watched every episode every day like on the Wednesday when it came out but like I don't know it wasn't groundbreaking it's just like mm, it was all right somebody's asked i think two people asked this actually if you could change anything about your past what would it be i'd probably just say relax i was so uptight when i was younger um when i, I don't know when i was probably like 14 to like 17 even 18 so uptight and i just i don't know everything had to be not my way, but I just, I had, as I said, I had a plan. <laughs> I had this plan and everything had to go to this plan. And if it didn't, I didn't, like, I wanted to plan weeks in advance, like what me and Bradley were doing every weekend. And it was just ridiculous. And like, now I'm so much more chilled. Like, I don't know, because like, you can't plan every step of your life. And I wish that I would have known that when I was like 16. As well, when I was younger, I kind of thought everything was right when it was my way. Like, I don't know. If other people did things, I was like, no, you don't do it like that. Like, you do it, you do it like this. Or like, or I wouldn't say it, but I think that in my head. And really, that's not true. Like, there's so many different people in the world. People have different outlooks on life at the end of the day. And people are always going to do things differently. Um, you know, some people do want to get married and have kids, you know, as I do. And some people really don't. Just, they just don't want to do that. They want to go travelling for the rest of their life. And that's okay. Like, and I think... I wish that my younger self would have known that rather than just thinking, no, it's like my way or the highway type of thing. Um, I don't know. I don't think I was necessarily like up myself or anything like that. Like I've always been quite a nice, kind, open person, like happy person. But I don't know, I just wish that I wouldn't have thought about it in my head as much. It wouldn't, I don't know, I don't think I necessarily ever said it to anyone. But I think it was just the thoughts in my head. I wish, I don't know, would have been more open minded. Someone said, I found MMU and was wondering what the best and worst thing about uni, about the uni and the uni life there is. The best thing is probably in the first year, you are in halls and you are so close to everything. MMU halls are really, really close to the uni. You can roll out of bed and be at university. And they're really close to like Oxford Road, where loads of stuff goes on in Manchester. They're really close to where all the clubs are, all the bars are. And it's a really short walk into town. It probably takes you 15 minutes to walk to the centre of Manchester from your halls. However, probably one of the worst things is then going into second year and having to move out to Fallowfield, which is where the majority of students live. And even though it's great and I've really enjoyed living there, it's a lot further out and you are going to have to get a bus or like drive or whatever into uni. Um, but you haven't really got an option unless you want to go back into halls kind of thing. And I really personally enjoyed living there. I really enjoyed my second year at uni or my first year, however you want to look at it. But I really enjoyed it and I've really like it's been a lot more me. Like I am not the biggest going out go out going outer and I was last year, like 
I was probably when I was 18, but I've kind of got to 20 now and I'm like, I'm done with it. And it makes me sound so old and like footy duty, but like, I don't know, I've kind of got to that age. So living there is fine for me, but I know a lot of people, you know, if you want to go out, it is obviously more of an effort to go out into Manchester, for example. And for me, like, I said this in my vlog that I did like last week. And for me, like, I'm at home here now, literally, after I film this video, I'm going into town. So I'm going to get in my car, go to town. It'll take me five minutes to drive into town and park my car for free and pop to the shops. I need a couple of birthday presents for a couple of my friends. I'm going to pop and get those. In Manchester, I wouldn't be able to do that. It would be like a t like two, three hour round trip. I'd have to drive there. That would take me like half an hour, and you could say get the bus, that's going to take even longer, so it doesn't even make a difference. Drive there, I'm going to have to park, the parking's quite expensive, I'm going to have to park, pay for parking, go and get my stuff, and it's just not easy, and that's one of the things I do miss about living in a small town. But in my first year I didn't find that, because I live so close to the city centre that I didn't find that it took a long time. I literally could walk 50 minutes. Or I got in my car and drove, which was even shorter of a, like, a time. Whereas this year, it's just a lot longer to get to places, which is the only thing that I don't like. But I have enjoyed my second year, probably more than my first. I don't know, I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> this is gonna be my last question, and it's who are your favorite small YouTubers? Um, oh, I can't miss anybody out. I don't know what you mean by small. Like, what, what level is small? I don't know, like, you all, got, you all know that I love Miss Budget Beauty. She's, like, my fave. Um, I'll link everybody down below that I'm talking about. She has got, like, 80,000 subscribers, something like that. So she's not particularly small. I really like Emily Rose. I've, like, discovered her videos in the last couple of months. I really like her videos. I'll link her down below. Beauty by Alice. I discovered her because she watches my videos and always commented below. So I clicked on her channel and I was like, oh, I like your videos. Um, and so I was watching hers. I'll link her down below. I really like Brogan Tate XO, as you all probably know. I always mention her in my weekly vlogs. I really like Rosanna Pierce as well. Um, I always mention her though as well. Um, and she's got like nearly 60,000, so she doesn't really count as being small either, does she? I really like Jess Beautician as well. Like, I really like her videos. No one speaks fine. I really like her videos. I think she's got like 16,000. I think I miss people out, so I'm sorry if I have because yeah i just think i have but um yeah there are a few different youtubers if you want to go and check them out i just really like i, I to be fair i prefer british youtubers to american youtubers just because i can relate to them more i don't know just things that happen like it's more relatable than like things that happen in america um so i do like prefer like british youtubers around like a similar age to me um and yeah that's who I like, really. So thank you very much for watching this, guys. I feel like it's been really rambly. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's not been, like, a normal Q&A. So I'm sorry if it's been a bit weird. But um, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, then the button is just down below. So make sure you click and subscribe. I'm really close to 12,000 subscribers. I might have reached it by the time this video goes up, actually. Because I'm pre-filming a few videos because I'm on holiday at the moment. I'll be coming home tomorrow, though, when this goes up. So that's sad, isn't it? But, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will speak to you next time. Bye!